Oh yeah, brother. Oh yeah. All right. So, time to make a quick update here. Um, try to make it as sweet and simple as possible. Doubt that's gonna happen, so I'll try my best. Um, I did an update on this thing a few months ago, a month or two ago. Not much has changed. Let me pop the hood in this thing. Interior, completely empty other than a couple towels. I don't know why the hell these things are here. I just kind of threw them in there. They look really organized though. Um, but, thought I'd kind of give a quick update on what's been done so far. Um, I think that since the last update, I have pulled the engine and transmission K-member completely out of this thing. Um, uh, let's see if I, I do have a light here. So, the things that have been done so far are I kind of cleaned up, <laughs> cleaned up, I pretty much did, cleaned up the wiring harness a little bit. Like I said, this is a stock truck harness that hasn't been extended or modified in any form other than just depinning the shit that I didn't need. Um, so I haven't added any extra wires to this thing and it pretty much fits. Um, I, the PCM on the stock fibers is right there and I think on the silver is still over here. So we, it's kind of tight in a couple things, but it will work. Um, the only thing I have to uh, do yet is check the O2 sensors. I believe they're hooked up right. It actually has um, case grounded O2 sensors um, and they're connected to an isolated harness. And according to the guy who created the LT1 swap website, that should work just fine um, because not only are the O2 sensors getting a ground from basically the case, or the block of the engine, it's going to the head, it's going to the headers, and then to the O2 sensors, but it's also getting a PCM ground from um, the wires connecting into it. So you're basically getting a double ground. Um, so it shouldn't be a problem, but I need to double check that it's getting the readings. I don't have HP tuners. Um, I wish I did. I eventually will get it, uh, but I can't really check to see if it is. Um, that's just one thing that I guess I can't really check right now because I don't want to fork out $500 because I'm such a cheap ass and it's just a cheap ass build um, to an extent. Um, but I need to definitely get that. I've been sent, I sent the ECM or the PCM ECU, whatever the hell you want to call it, in once already um, to get it the vats deleted and at least get it running. I am going to send it in one, one more time um, to get a couple things so it actually will run down the road and then from there I'll get HP tuners and do all the rest of the shit myself. But a couple of things that I've done, I moved the Corvette fuel regulator over. It actually was sitting right there. Um, I thought it was way too close to headers and these fuel lines are way too close to the headers as well. So I pulled them over, mounted right there and I also added in a um, fuel pressure regulator. Looks like it's sitting at 40 right now. And the car's been started for about two days. So, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> excuse me. Um, <laughs> My daughter has a cold and I think I'm getting it from her now. But um, anyways, uh, it's it, when the car's running, it's running almost directly right on 58. So that's a good sign. Added new brake lines, front brake lines. Front ones were shot when I bought this car. They were bent. They were just, look, I don't even think the brakes really work. They were, it was like they hit something. They were just shit. So I got new ones, 50 bucks. Um, not a bad deal for um, fitted front brake lines. Um, I got this bellow uh, for the um, MAF sensor. This MAF sensor is off a of North Star V8, and it's actually the same part number that's on the Silverados. I believe this came from like a 2004 or 2003 Cadillac. I don't know what kind of Cadillac it came from, but they were having a U-Pull-a-thon at our local U-Pull, which is an hour and a half for me. And I was walking down one of the aisles, and I'm like, shit, that looks just like one of the truck ones. So I, I stopped by it, I ran the pot number, and I'm like, shit, it's the same thing as a Silverado. So I picked that up, because um, I needed one, and it works. It fits exactly in the LS style bellow. Um, I got that bellow, or the, they, they call it a bellow, because it's got like that bulbous thing on it, that kind of gives it its angle. Um, got that for 17 bucks, the cheapest I could find, and it fits perfect, and that's a, uh, that's a truck throttle body and everything about it fits perfect. Even the little inserts that come on the sides fits in perfect, so I'm pretty impressed. It works. Um, I'm trying to think what else I've done. I got the little check valve for the vacuum hoses on, uh, so I should have my 
climate control working, as well as the vacuum storage bulb that's in the front of this thing. It stores like vacuum pressure basically, or vacuum, yeah, vacuum pressure, um, negative pressure. <coughs> so everything works. Um, I need to connect the brake booster, um, but that'll be later. I bled the brakes, so those are all good to go. Um, uh, the I got the third gen drive shaft on. Basically, the transmission that's in this, um, my last video, I explained it has an S10 transmission in it, a 4L60, and the 4L60 that's off those um, vehicles, that's like the S10, the Blazers and stuff, <coughs> excuse me, um, they are the LT style transmission. So basically, they have a bell housing on them that's a little bit shorter. Um, it's about, eh, you could basically say it's three, three quarter inch shorter. Um, and it has a 298 millimeter um, torque converter versus a 300 millimeter torque converter that's on the LS. And the LS, like I said, it's it's about the LS transmission. The 4L60 is about three quarter inch longer. The bell housing is so when you hook the transmission up to these things, um, it's going to be shorter. So when you go throw the drive shaft back in, you're like, shit, I'm losing three quarter inch on the yoke, and it's not engaging as much. Well, your fix here is grab the third gen Camaro Firebird drive shaft. And hook it up to your 410 yoke and problem solved uh it, it fits perfect i ended up picking the drive shaft up too at the same time i was i knew they had uh, a camaro and a firebird there and i'm like shit well i end up uh you know disconnecting everything and pulling the drive shaft that'll take me you know five ten minutes i went to find the firebird right at the end of the aisle and someone already pulled the 700 r4 that was out of it and sure enough the drive shaft was laying around the ground so I'm like, fuck pick that shit up that was easy pick um, so I did that, and I, I got two new U-joints for 18 bucks um, for the pair, and um, connected it, and it fits perfect. Um, the transmission, I posted on the Sloppy um, Public page that the this is a, a stock uh, S10 4L60 out of a 2001 S10 two-wheel drive, and I was wondering why the hell... Um, I couldn't get the, the the wheels to spin. I'd put it in gear and they just wouldn't spin. Well, everybody's like, oh yeah, the torque converter is wrong and you don't know what the hell you're doing. You broke torque. I'm like, no, you're fucking retarded. The torque converter's on there perfect. It was damn near, I mean, it was literally rubbing the bell housing. If I would have pushed any further back, I would be pushing it through the fucking bell housing. So I can't go any further back. And when I went to pull it forward on the engine, it was only about a quarter or a one eighth of an inch which is within GM specs. I'm like, I know the torque converter is on correctly. Ended up being, when I bought it, got from the junkyard, I didn't pull it. I actually went to B&R and they, they, I bought it for 125 bucks and it came out of a running S10. They pulled the filter out of it and they drained the pan. Um, and I actually later contacted them about it after I figured out, one guy said, oh, I checked to make sure there's a filter in it. Very rarely it would be um, the filter, but it just might be the filter. Um, and sure enough, the filter was gone. And I called them like, yeah, they pull it to drain it. And then normally what happens is the transmission after it moves and stuff like that, they'll drain some fluid in the pan. So there's probably about like two or three quarts in the pan. So I um, emptied the pan out, cleaned the pan out. There wasn't much in there. Um, and then I pump uh, full of fluid, put about two quarts into it and it still needs more, but I got the rear wheels to spin. So that was the whole problem there was it was freaking missing a filter. I couldn't believe it. So uh, that was, I mean, it was weird, but it was an easy fix. So. Um, I need to get three quarter inch heater hose. Um, I'm gonna do that and then I'm going to flush the block. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a garden hose in this thing and then I'm going, I have a um, thermostat housing that doesn't have a thermostat in it and I'm just gonna hook it up and then I'm just gonna pump it, run the engine and just pump it water until it's clear and then I'll turn it off and I'll drain a little bit and then I'll add some um, constant, you know, full concentrate um, coolant in it and then run it again and we should be good there. Other than that, that's pretty much it. Um, got the driver's side mirror at the U-Polathon as well. Um, this one, the other one was cracked. It says paint this. Yeah, no shit. Um, it's kind of a, it's a running joke with one of my buddies. Um, interior is completely um, ripped out. I need to get a dash. The dash I found from the car that had this was cracked just like this one was. So I'll just wait until I get another one. Um, and then I also got a rear bumper because the bumper that came in this car was trash. And this one was in really good shape. Don't paint this. <laughs> Like I said, running joke. So um, other than that, everything else is pretty much uh, good. I have a budget of 9,500 bucks in this car and that's brand, I mean, that's full paint job, new carpet, new headliner, 
dash, new stereo system. Um, I'm actually gonna put a, I'm just going off a tangent, so just kind of uh, bear with me. Like I said, I just kind of go randomly. Uh, I'm gonna put a fifth gen Camaro engine cover on this thing. So I'll have to notch this little section out by the alternator, but I wanna hide all these wires and stuff. So I'm gonna put that uh, LS3 style engine cover on it and cover a lot of the stuff. I'm just gonna kind of organize all these other wires up um, with that. So that shouldn't cost too much. Um, other than that, the only thing other I have to give is I'm actually gonna give a stock um, air box and air filter here because they're really cheap compared to like the SLP style. You can get them for 40, 50 bucks around here. And big deal if I lose five horsepower getting like an SLP lit, I don't give a shit. Um, I just want it to have an air filter on it and I just want to basically cruise in the car. So I'm gonna do that because I can save myself 50 bucks and put it somewhere else. Um, that's pretty much it. I have the T-tops off, the windows down, um, just to kind of air the car out a little bit more. I'm gonna clean this up in here. Um, so this winter will basically just be a lot of organization uh, cleaning, uh, just basically that's it. Just organization, cleaning, making sure everything's good to go. Um, get the torque arm. There's two bolts towards the rear end that I need to still connect. They're on there, but they're not completely all the way down. So I need to get those down and I can put the nuts on them and get those tight. That's a trailblazer shifter. Um, you can put a trailblazer, any kind of trailblazer um, shifter on here. All you have to do is um, kind of drill out the recess portion inside. Uh, otherwise it won't go all the way down and when you tighten it, it'll actually tighten down on the the mechanism that engages the transmission. So you'll be like, shit, I tightened it down and now I can't even like pull the transmission on the park. Well yeah, you have to you have to drill out the inside of it um, and then put it down and tighten it so it goes a little bit lower. So I did that, works perfect, awesome. That was a nice three dollar tip versus the other one. I like that shifter a lot more than the the one that comes in the Firebirds that has like the button on top. Um, it's a lot more, I guess, comfortable. Um, so that's just my opinion anyways, but yeah, that's pretty much an update. Um, nothing more, nothing more, I guess to really say keeping the stock hood. I was going to put a Ram air hood on it. I actually been looking at pictures, um, and I actually have grown on the stock formula hood on this thing. Um, and I plan on putting on Z06 C5 wheels and some fresh new tires. And that's also part of the the budget for 9,500 bucks. So, um, got a rack and pinion. Um, yeah, this would be the last piece that I say here. Got a rack and pinion. This actually came off a V6 car. Um, I needed a LS1 style rack and pinion because these are a lot shallower, or I guess you could say there's more of a V here. They're not straight up and down like this. Actually, the one that came off the car is more up and down. As you can see, it's not quite angled as much like that. It's more up and down and it runs in, when you hook up the um, steering shaft, it runs into the motor mounts and it also will run into the headers. So I need an LS1 style. And this actually came off a V6 car too, but if you have a V6 car that has an RPO code of FE2, FE4, or FE7, they actually have the LS1 style steering rack in it. So if you find a V6 car and you find that RPO code in there, Save yourself a hundred twenty, one hundred fifty dollars off a steering rack because it will work. Um, this one came off an FE4 car, and it sure as hell works. The same style as the LS1. So I got this, and to actually got two steering shafts total. All that stuff for one hundred twenty bucks. So I'm actually gonna get sell one of those back. They normally go for thirty to fifty bucks. So I'm gonna get rid of that, and I'm gonna put new um, tie rod ends on it and put it in the car, and I'll actually have steering. And it will, I got the lines, and it will hook up to the stock truck um, power steering. And for all the people that said, oh yeah, the stock hood on the F bodies, or at least the Firebirds, oh, they won't work with truck accessories. Yeah, a load of bullshit. They, it fits just fine. So if you want to do a Firebird at least, I don't know about the Camaros, I don't know how, how tall their hoods are, but even a stock Firebird 4th um, gen from 98 to 02 at least, um, the stock hood will fit the truck accessories. So don't waste your money. Um, if you just want a functional lightweight car, use the stock hood, use the truck accessories. It'll fit just fine. Even the radiator and the stock position, it'll fit just fine. So that's all I have right now. Maybe in the next couple months, I'll have an update. Uh, actually our second kid is due in April. So 
I don't know how much more I'm going to get done with this until then, just for I'm going to start preparing after Christmas and the holidays are coming up and stuff. So, um, uh, oh yeah, I got the air dam off that same car that I got the other pieces off of because there wasn't one on here. I picked all that stuff up and I picked up some LS coils. I picked up probably $200 or $250 worth of parts for 50 bucks. So if they have another one and they have another fourth gen, I'll probably pick up some more parts. So that's all I have right now. Take it easy guys. Later.